Okay, I've got all of my bolts tightened up here. So the throat of the machine has been fully pulled down and in place. So now you have to make sure that it's rotationally aligned. And again, there's no pins or anything to do that. So you just have to get it close. Um, and that's why I, I use these to get it close. And sometimes you get lucky and sometimes it requires a little bit of manipulation. So the way we're going to check it is to grab a double screw housing and we're going to push it in so it's just past the throat down here and then I'm going to give it a spin and make sure that that housing is completely free because if this throat is in there and it's, and it's cocked a little bit it will not allow this to slide through properly. So this is how we check it. So if you get the throat down and it's, and it's cocked a little bit and you need to rotate it. The way that we've found that works the best is we just take a piece of uh, aluminum flat bar and we actually just bolt it on these two 10 millimeter threaded holes. You just bolt it on here and here and tighten that up and you just get a big crescent wrench with a big cheater bar. I know it sounds kind of barbaric but it works and you just jog it just a little bit check your fit jog it a little bit more check your fit until you get it just right but this it's a very simple very practical way to get this realigned um, the only other way to do it is to <laughs> take all these bolts out and pull it out and try it again so once it's in place just a little bit of movement here usually gets the job done Okay, the next thing we need to get established is we need to install the outer ring, which this is the outer ring. Make sure all these surfaces here are good and clean, which I've done. Same thing here, make sure this all these surfaces are good and clean. So we're going to install this right there, line the holes up. So what we're going to do now is we need to check the air gap between the top of this outer ring and the top of the funnel against the catch ring. And this is your catch ring. It goes down on top of that. So I'm going to show you how to check this and make sure that it's shimmed properly. bolts up. There's actually six bolts that go in here, but you can just put three equally spaced at the moment. So that's down and in place. And now we're going to put our catch ring in place. Same thing with the catch ring. Make sure all these surfaces are good and clean. And we're going to just uh, set this right on top of the four point bearing. And it should fall into place. You should not have to hammer on any of this stuff. This is, this is all delicate, fragile stuff. So I'm just going to take two bolts for the moment and install those. Okay. So everything's in place. There's no shims in this particular unit. But when I took this unit apart, it did not have any shims in it. And we're doing just a simple seal replacement on this particular piece. We're using the same four point bearing, it was fine. We cleaned it up and we purged it uh, with some fresh uh, food grade grease and it, it was nice and tight so there's no problem. So we're basically putting all the same parts into this particular machine. Uh, we're just replacing the seals. Uh, and the o-rings so now we need to get our feeler gauge set and ideally when all these parts are new and free of dings the manufacturer calls for eight to ten thousandths of air gap between the catch ring 
and the throat and the catch ring and the outer ring. So as a general rule of thumb, I like to shim them right about 10 thousandths. So I've already gone through and, and done this on this particular unit. So if I grab a 10 thousandths feeler gauge, which I have right there, it should slide in all the way around, no problem. On the outside, the outer ring, and on the inside, same thing. Right in here, you gotta check that. Make sure that you have 10 thousandths of gap all the way around. And you can go down to, I would say if you had to have a range, eight to 12, I would say would be acceptable. So that's the big thing right now is to check this gap. And what you wanna do is you wanna get this gap or these two gaps shimmed correctly before we put any seals in this unit. So we got hard surfaces all together. We, if we need shims, we shim it, we pull it together, we check our gaps, and at that point we know all of our spacing is correct. And then we can go ahead and install the seals. So if your unit does require shims, these are the shims that go under the catch ring. I'm gonna show you when I take it back apart. And then these shims, so that would be if the gap out here was too large between the outer ring and the catch ring. If this gap was too large and you needed to bring the catch ring, I'm sorry, the outer ring up, you would actually put these shims underneath of the outer ring to bring it up. And these are available in two different thicknesses uh, as well as these. So the same thing here. If we assembled this and these gaps were too low, meaning that there's actually stainless rubbing on stainless, then you would put these shims under the catch ring and move the catch ring up, which would make your air gaps increase. Okay? So basically you're, you're shimming off of a fixed point, and that fixed point is this throat. Okay, this face in here, we pull that down, tighten it up, that's a fixed point. So we basically shim from that fixed point up, we get our air gap proper between the face of the uh, funnel insert here, the throat, and the catch ring. Once we get that right, then we come out here and we make sure that this gap is right. And if it's too large, we put shims underneath the outer ring and we bring it up. Again, 10 thousandths on the OD, 10 thousandths on the ID. If you can keep that, everything will be just fine. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and pull this apart and I will show you exactly where these shims go if your particular unit needs shims. Okay, we'll pull the catch ring off. So if that catch ring needs to come up, increasing the air gap, these shims go right here on top of the four point bearing. And if you have to put these in, I recommend putting just a little dab of grease on these uh, to keep them from moving around. So there would be actually four of these segmentally around this surface to bring the catch ring up. A few bolts, and now we can remove the outer ring. And if this outer ring needs to be adjusted up, then this shim here would go right here. Same thing, a little dab of grease to keep it in position while you place that outer ring over the shims. 
but this particular unit does not need any shims so we're basically ready to reassemble installing the seals okay we have everything shimmed we have all of our clearances exactly where we want them we know everything is spaced properly we don't have any metal on metal surfaces so now we can go ahead and begin the final assembly so your packing cord is going to go around your outer ring so I like to there's always a seam on the packing cord and I like to put it at the very back so there's a hole back here at the back um, on the on the outer ring so just take one of the holes and match up your seam to that hole and you're going to install the packing cord carefully around your outer ring just kind of wiggle it into place little patience never hurts either okay so you want to make sure that that's pushed down all the way around just like that and our seam where this silicone is bonded together is right at one of the holes so make sure that's all the way down just like that and what I like to do is I like to take just a little bit of food grease and go around this this lip because when the lip hits the stainless that little bit of lubrication is going to let that rubber lip go into position where you want it to go instead of getting puckered up underneath so just going to take a, just a real little bit of, of food grease just real lightly get that, that that leading edge of that lower lip Just like that. And we're going to find our, our, um, our seam, which is right there. And I'm going to put that at the very far back, carefully. Just like that. And that should go right into place. And now go ahead and put all these six short socket head cap screws back into place. You want to make sure you have the right fastener here. This is a short head uh, socket head cap screw because if you get a normal size socket head cap screw it will prevent the spring energized seal from going into the groove all the way so it's very important to have the right fastener here. That grease did its job around here. Everything looks beautiful. You see how the seal went out like that? And that grease really helps you do that. So now we're gonna move on to the next step.